It's indeed a pleasure to be here, to see and also to get a glimpse of what the industry themselves are doing in bringing that big difference which India so terribly needs now and the video actually makes me begin from there. So to all those who are present, thank you for being here and the IFQM organizers for giving me a chance to be here to understand and also for the media to cover and for the top industrial group leaders to be here reassures that our reassures for me and I'm sure for all of us that our path towards Vikasit Bharat is not just going to be based on some infrastructure that is getting built, a nominal improvement in the training of our human resource, but there is a seasoned look into what quality management is and at what levels and to which wings of our manufacturing or even for service sector the interventions are required. And with the seasoned input from industry leaders, this intervention can be a very powerful catalyst towards greater and better production in India, improving the quality of services in India, and so on. So, thank you for bringing me here. And it gives me an idea of at what level the engagement is happening. And to make it absolutely comprehensive, you made sure that you're talking about not just the business, the shop flow management, but also you are very clear about how you want the youth, the engagement with the academia, the students, and so on, has brought in that spectrum, the rainbow-like spectrum of engaging in all those sectors or all those spheres which bring in the quality management into every activity that you take up. So this is a very timely uh, symposium. Even in its second edition, as I understand, the two-day symposium with every stakeholder talking from his or her experience is certainly going to give us something which policymakers can benefit from. And therefore, I appreciate, even at the outset, uh, this attempt to have a two-day high-level discussion and bringing in every uh, participant to be here to hear what is really being churned out. From my side, I think it is appropriate that I speak a few words on what the government is doing on it. In every budget, we had made sure that in the last two, three years, we made a provision for skilling our manpower, and just not through some training courses, but engaging with different authorities who seem to have a good plan on skilling. Is, is uh, this skilling scheme or the exposure to the students for skilling designed to end with it or begin with it? Not at all. Even as we are making sure that there are youth are being brought with some incentives to give them as well on the offer. We are committed ourselves to endo institutions which have been there for decades together in India, but without much upgradation. It required quite a sum of money, and quite a sum of money we offered from the budget so that Institutions which are at the grassroots level, which are at the district level, such as the ITI, which don't invoke so much of, uh, you know, a war wow factor because they are now fading out. Not, not much money has been invested in them. And therefore, with the changing needs of industry, both in the manufacturing and in services or technology-driven services, 
the, the crop doesn't come from there for recruitment when you need young people, new entrants to come into the areas where you are trying to bring in a rapid change. So these ITIs, although present at the district level in every state, were there, but really were not adding to the rapidly changing production environment. So after a good discussion with the states, we came up with an offer from the central government that these ITIs, as I said, one in every district, there are about 750 approximate number, 750 districts. So if these ITIs would adopt a hub and spoke model within a state, we will be able to provide them the entire money required for upgrading these places for AI-driven training centers. Uh, let me just, aside from this, remind you that the government has identified some institutes of excellence, such as the IITs or Indian Institute of Sciences and so on, for setting up institute, institutions of excellence for AI-related R&D and also training focusing on four different areas. Niti Aayog has also been working actively on this. And the four areas are agriculture, education, health, and urban living cities of uh, the brownfield cities or the greenfield cities. But recently, I understand, Niti Aayog, in one of its presentations recently, added space and nuclear technology as the fifth component. So in different institutions of excellence, now it is well established, research and development related activities, primarily keeping AI at its center is already well grounded. Of course, each one of them is going to focus on um, the area given to them, agriculture or health or education or the other two. If this is going on on one side, and this is going to draw youngsters who have already qualified from an institution with some exposure or minimum exposure to AI, but they are the ones who are also going to be drawn to these centers of excellence and probably continue to work more on AI with specific area specializations. If that is one activity, the proposal which came through the budget was to ensure at the ground level AI-driven skills are given to youngsters, even if they are school dropouts, or if they are 10 plus 2 passouts, or had finished some kind of a qualification, some degree, but today wants to acquire the AI-related skills, all of these people will be entertained in the ITI-based formulation that we've come up with. So if five districts, in fact, uh, I must say that yesterday I was in Andhra Pradesh and the chief minister there has been very clearly keen on getting uh, AI-driven approach for training young people in Andhra Pradesh and he was also straight away willing to have for five districts one ITI hub upgraded for all that it is required for AI-based training. And with that AI's hub, hub at the center, the spoke would each choose whichever area they want to do, uh, AI-driven training. One could be power tools, another could be uh, some uh, activity related to local agriculture requirement. A third could do for, as has been sp spoken earlier, for MSME-related areas for that area MSME specialization and so on. So the budget plan actually aims at setting up these hubs with literally everything that is required for AI hands-on training. Many states are contemplating to move on that um, as it is. And it may not be out of place for me to say here that in the recent visit of the Singapore Prime Minister and earlier 
before his arrival, uh, the India-Singapore Ministerial Roundtable, which happened before the Prime Minister's visit, and similarly, in the last year, which happened before Indian Prime Minister's visit to Singapore. So both these ISMRs, the India-Singapore Ministerial Roundtable, has also spoken a lot on how quality management and better quality uh, using technology, improving productivity, can all be simultaneously worked on for a better result. And Singapore was quite happy to engage with India in coming to give training and to certify quality training. So work is in progress on that angle as well. So today we are talking about various ways in which Government of India can invest to give the necessary wherewithal with which good quality trainers, wherever they are, I would like to also have a pool of name of good quality trainers, if they together work with this physical infrastructure that the government can provide, I think youth of India who are revving to get that skill or to upgrade the existing skills will benefit an industry which normally has a grievance, which normally continues to have a grievance, that for the changes that are happening in today's India, where industry is rapidly moving towards Web3, trying to utilize every advantage that AI gives, they are unable to find youth or new hands to come in and bridge the gap which exists in the manpower requirement. Most often, industry's grievance when talking to the government has been, we are moving rapidly because this is going to bring in a big change to India's industry. Globally, we'll be leaders in producing using high-end high technologies, but we are not able to have the right kind of people to employ. So recognizing this is when in the last two budget provisions have been made so that manpower, skilling, and upskilling can all happen with the investment which we can put in. Many states are keen on it. Maharashtra earlier had spoken about it as well. So this best practice of getting manpower trained has got to be also focused on one very big segment which um, the chairman Tata son spoke about. India's biggest contributor to the GDP is from the MSME sector. They are spread all across. And the skills, uh, and the MSME ministry recognizes clusters, MSME clusters. And in those clusters, today we have ensured that the Small Industries Development Bank of India is physically present. Even in this day and age where we are talking about digital banking, we've insisted that SIDBI would be present in each one of these clusters. They are about 245 recognized by the ministry. But to the extent of 150 clusters since last year, the physical presence of SIDBI so that direct credit facility will be available for MSME clusters is happening. Now, in these clusters, we have already started a program which is taken off in some state, states yet or in the process to be taken off in some others. These clusters have each have their own specializations. Um, and it, it largely depends on the other industrial ecosystem which prevails in that state, in that region. So as a result, these MSME clusters have chosen to have um, training among themselves at their level. level. But my keenness has been to work with them to make sure that the training that they offer, and it is a very interesting model because the clusters requirement for manpower, upskilling, are all taken on board while they provide the training. They train more than what they need, and those left out after being employed are available in the market for others to benefit from. So if MSME cluster focus is what we are taking on for training and for skilling, I'm sure uh, today IFQM 
with the kind of well thought through programs that you're doing. And if you're able to, at least in a few centers, work together with the government, there will be a collective or the synergy will be far better. And from there on, the government as well can sharp focus on the kind of training it wants to offer for uh, skilling. I think the biggest challenge for India, particularly when we are periodically reminding ourselves that we have an advantage of demographic dividend, we also have to periodically remind ourselves that we need to attend to the skilling requirement or else industry will be hard-pressed for human resource and we will not get the advantage of the demographic dividend. So at this time, for IFQM to talk about quality management and skilling and also for inclusion and inclusive growth sake, talk about MSMEs, I think is, that's the best thing that can happen. I congratulate uh, Venu uh, Srinivasan, who's of course not here today, and uh, Sri Chandrasekharan, and all of you all indeed, for this great intervention at this stage. And I look forward to have the report coming from here so that we can learn and do something with the industry participating with us. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and I wish the two days uh, gathering all the very best and I'm sure you'll each go back with some takeaways with which all of us can benefit. Thank you very much.